All right, so we'll go over how to use the rheometer here. When you first come down, first thing to check is what's on this piece of paper here. First check that the air pressure is at 30 PSI. That's not this gauge. If it's not, don't operate the rheometer. The second thing, you'll remove the cap here. So grab hold of the cap with your other hand, uh, unscrew. You're unscrewing the draw rod. So the draw rod can come up and out. So that's our draw rod. This is the cap. We're going to replace this draw rod with a draw rod that has a temperature probe so that we can control the temperature of the upper plate. So this is our this is our longer draw rod, which has a uh, temperature sensor um, at the end. So that goes up here. Okay. Um, I can now power up. Now that I've removed this cap, you can power up the rheometer. So the on switch is just on the black box under here. All right, the next thing I want to do is attach the upper heated plate system. Uh, right? So the upper heated plate is behind the monitor on this kind of like cup holder that's attached to the frame. So this is going to control the temperature of the upper geometry. Uh, it has some coolant lines. And for this, I'll need the ball driver here. It's the longer one that is in that little section. Um, so there's three screws. When you're screwing this on to the top part, you have to be careful that you don't uh, over tighten or screw in the screws at an angle. Um, so otherwise, it's very easy to strip the threads. All right, so let's bring this up, line it with the three holes. I like to kind of rotate it, it'll kind of feel um, like it's in there. Hold it up with one hand, you have to kind of hold it pretty firmly um, and screw this in. And if it doesn't um, feel like it's going in very easily, don't force it. Just uh, try rotating it around a little bit. And maybe go for a different screw. Once we have the upper heated plate system, uh, we can put on our geometry. So that's the, um, for now, or for this demonstration, we'll put the uh, 40 millimeter upper geometry. Before I can put it on, I will want to just clean it. Um, so let's take a Kim wipe, wet it with methanol. Oh. Um, and wipe the surface. All right, just screw this on. Um, so we're going to thread it into the draw rod. So you'll push it up as far as it'll go. Um, and then hold this tight, or hold that steady and still, and just screw the top draw rod. Right, just hand tighten that. 
you can test, you should be able to spin it, and it should spin without much friction. There's air bearings here that'll, um, that should be working. Uh, you can also test or just look at it um, and notice if there's any wobble. So if it's not screwed on right or if it's screwed on um, at an angle or in some way crooked, you'll notice it by just giving it a spin uh, and looking at that. All right, so now we'll put on the base for the microscopy attachment. So this piece gets unscrewed. You can just put it on the side. Um, and we'll put on our microscope base. So when you're holding this, just make sure to hold it from the kind of metallic base. There's three screws here, which attach. This microscope attachment, we have these three cables. Two are for the piezo, um, the objective piezo mount, uh, which will move the objective up and down over a range of 100 microns. Um, and then the longer cord is the power cord for the LED, which we use for the illumination. I'm just going to put these on the side for now. Um, so next, we install this. Uh, so this will hold the glass plate. I will put the sample on. This will be the bottom plate. Um, so this will, when it sits on the rheometer, this white strip here will be forward, will face like directly uh, towards you. So to make this easier, I'm just going to thread the piezo cables, so the two shorter ones, through this thing. And then when I put it on, I'm gonna have to tilt it at an angle here so I don't run into the upper geometry. So I've got it through, I'm gonna rotate it so the white strip is forward. I have to hit this button, which demagnetizes bottom of the base. Okay. And now that demagnetization lasts only about 10 seconds. And then once it's magnetized again, it'll lock this in place if this is, if it's, as long as it's firmly seated in that uh, bottom part. All right. Um, so that's the hardest part. I can now attach some of the cables. So the upper heated plate has a cable, um, and this bottom part I just put in has a cable. I'll need this T adapter. Um, line up the red dots. There's one, the other, and then this goes to the instrument. All right. Uh, I can plug things in too. So I have my two uh, piezo cables. And I have the LED power cable. I'll also have to plug the power into this box here, which is the piezo stage controller box. Um, that should have the power cable unplugged, just dangling out. I'll plug that in, and I'll plug in this box, which is the microscope controller. So in the microscope controller, we can control the light intensity. 
the piezo, um, so that'll move from zero to 100 microns, and the counter rotation ratio, which when you start up should be at 10%, um, and you can change that. And all of these um, can be enabled by pressing them, and then you can alter the value. Uh, you can press it again so that when you rotate it, it doesn't make any change. All right, now we can put on the glass slide. Um, so we'll need two things here. If we're using the thicker glass plate, which is the glass plate that's one millimeter thick about, we'll just need that one plate. Um, and this thing, which will clamp that plate to our base here, and that has an O-ring, which should be in that groove. And if it sometimes it falls out, you can just make sure to grab that. So before putting on the glass plate, we should clean it again with a Kim White and methanol. screws on this uh, clamping thing. Um, so we'll have to carefully put it on so it doesn't touch the upper geometry. Line it up with the three screw holes and then you can just hand tighten that. All right, now we're ready to calibrate the instrument. So we'll just start up the TRIO software. Hit connect. Uh, while that's loading, I'll also turn on the camera. So the camera will need um, two connectors. There's uh, an Ethernet cable, um, which is for transmitting the camera data, and then there's this cable for turning it on, for powering. And that does need to go on at a certain orientation. Since we have the upper heated plate, I need to turn on the um, coolant system here, which will flow coolant through the upper heated plate thing. Um, so the power is just on the back there somewhere. So I'll open up this. One thing I need to make sure is that the TRIO software is recognizing the correct upper geometry, which it's not. It thinks it's a 20 millimeter parallel plate, which is by a parallel plate that was used latest or before, um, whereas we really have that 40 millimeter plate. So I can look on the left here. And look, there's several 40 millimeter parallel plates, but I'll match up the one that has the right serial number. So, let's see. That's this one. Trying to get the instrument to automatically read the serial number and determine that we have the right geometry. And I think it did that. So now when I go up to calibrate, um, I have the right geometry here, the 40 millimeter parallel plate. Um, there's two important calibrations to do inertia and friction. So I'm going to run those. It'll take 30 seconds each. While that's going on, I can install the objective lens. So we'll use, we have uh, different options. I'm going to use the 40x objective.
Uh, notice that with the, the 40X as well as the 20X, they have a correction collar that you can uh, change and that, that should match the thickness of the glass that you're imaging across. So we're imaging across this one millimeter thick glass plate. So I should set that to one millimeter. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's set correctly after I screw it on. All right, so those calibrations are done. So there will be a cap on the objective piezo map mount that you'll have to remove. And then you can screw the objective lens. Now I'll do the, uh, the next calibration step. I'm going to lower this upper um, this upper part a little bit until we get that upper geometry a little closer to the glass plate. And now I have to zero that gap between the glass plate and the upper geometry. So you go um, on the right hand side of the Trio software, there'll be a tab called Gap, and there'll be an option. It's called zero gap. Click that. It'll now slowly lower the upper geometry until it makes contact with that glass plate, and it'll call that zero gap. And then it'll raise the geometry back up to a height where I can load the sample in. All right, so we'll load a sample now. Um, I'm gonna put. Uh, 210, yeah, 210 microliters of the sample on. So I'll pipette it in the center of the glass plate as close as I can. I'll pipette slowly because I want to avoid any air bubbles. I do have an air bubble that formed. I'm just going to take the corner of a Kim wipe and get it into a, a point. Pop that air bubble. Maybe pop this other one as well. Okay. Then I'm just going to lower this. And I can either specify with the software the gap that I want. I'm just going to lower it until the upper geometry touches the sample, and it has. Then I'm going to, on the right hand side, there's a tab called motor. Yeah, it's called motor, and I can set the velocity, uh, and I will set it to 0 0.2 radians per second. So now the upper geometry is rotating at 0.2 radians per second. I'm going to have it rotate and help center the sample uh, in the gap, and then slowly just touch the down button until the sample completely fills the gap. So I need the sample to reach the corner or, or the edges of our 40 millimeter plate upper geometry. All right, I can also specify the gap height in the software, so right now it's 232 microns. I still need to go some distance before I completely fill that gap. Um, I'm getting close. I'm just going to type in 200 microns and hit enter. And it'll bring down that upper geometry. 
It'll bring it down pretty slowly, which you want, again, to avoid air bubbles. Uh, still a little bit far. And while I, I just lowered it again to 170 microns, while that's going, I'm just going to get the camera started. To work with this um, Manta camera, you open Vimba Viewer, software control for the camera, uh, and you just enable, there should be a, a checkbox for this Manta G033B camera, you just check it, and then you can close that whole software, both, both of those two windows. And then open up MicroMan. There's an option if you go under devices, device property browser. There's an option called uh, Gig E camera adapter pixel type, which by default is mono 8. If you select that and scroll up, you'll find mono 12. You want that selected. And I can hit live. And this translation stage here, I uh, can use to position the objective. So I'm rotating this clockwise to bring the sample into focus. As I bring it into focus, I might need to turn down the intensity. I need to make sure that the correction collar is set correctly. I'll have a hard, find, I'll have a hard time uh, finding focus if that correction collar is not correctly uh, positioned. So I'm too bright, I need to use this or reduce the exposure time. and focus. Uh, I still need to go down a little bit on the gap size. Good. Going to 150 microns. And once I do have a good gap size that fills fills the gap, I will place some oil around the edge to prevent evaporation. You might need to turn on a flashlight. Check, it looks like I just need to go down a little bit. I'm gonna go down to 140 microns. That looks good. All right, now I will seal the sample. take out about 80 microliters. I probably won't need even that much. And I'll use the Canon S3 viscosity standard. It's a very low viscosity oil. I 
and as the upper geometry is rotating, we still set it, it's still rotating at the 0.2 radians per second that we set it to. I'm just going to pipette the oil around the edge. Alright, then we can just start our data collection.